Can you name the Avengers three most useful abilities for group play? Allow me to do it for you. Iron Man's Arc Overload projects a bubble shield that if properly specced can block projectiles for allies if they stack or group up on Stark and remain inside. This is a perfect damage negating nightmare and it can also provide the opportunity for everyone to deal damage from within the bubble. Kate Bishop's Warp Arrow can be specced for Singularity that can wrangle up enemies and momentarily trap them in a small area for CC or crowd control. This ability can have multiple charges and some gear will grant additional charges. Using the ability in concert with aware teammates can be a quick way to clear a room full of adds or low level, typically respawning reinforcements. Lastly, Kamala Khan's healing spirit can be specced to instantly res any fallen player. Her having the ability to use multiple charges of this makes it easily one of the most devastating support abilities on any character in the entire game. There are at least four other broken abilities that I'd rather shut my mouth about in the hopes that they stay broken, but these, working as intended, are arguably the most beneficial to group play in Marvel's Avengers as it stands. As we proceed, I need to talk about aggro. This is aggro. In this clip, Thor has all of it. When you have the aggro, your teammates might as well be invisible to the enemies. Sometimes the person doing the most damage automatically has the most aggro, but sometimes heroes are able and built to naturally generate and maintain aggro with their abilities. Marvel's Avengers has showcased its inability to observe what other games in the space that it tries to inhabit have done, and I'll explain why the incomplete game that they have crafted would be a laughable fit for anything resembling a raid. In my script I've written, explain buffs, debuffs, BIS, AOE, DOT, adds, pulling, aggro, kiting, CC, res, spreading, and stacking. But just thinking about explaining these terms makes me feel like I have the wrong player base. Honestly, an existing player base is what we need. I'll endeavor to organically explain these terms as I proceed in delivering an overview of what I consider a good, small-scale raid experience. But first, whatever endgame modes come to Marvel's Avengers, they won't be a raid. Raids, historically, are challenging group experiences that have the potential to be extremely daunting endeavors. Looking back to vanilla World of Warcraft, raid parties included as many as 40 people and were designed accordingly. A raid can be simple or complex, but the difficulty hinges on your party and how well they understand the mechanics, know their roles, can adapt to variables and compensate for momentarily compromised teammates, and most importantly, communication. Marvel's Avengers has punished the very idea of playing as a group with a buggy launch featuring broken matchmaking and a repetitive 40 plus floor endgame mode that you can only play solo still after four months. Six years ago in 2014, one week after Destiny's launch, its first raid, The Vault of Glass, was playable. To me, it represents the perfect balance of not too easy but not too challenging mechanics indicative of a casual raid-like experience. Destiny gives us a more focused look at a smaller scale encounter crafted for a six-man team. Destiny's first raid begins with six guardians at the locked door to the Vault of Glass. There are three sync plates that the six players need to defend to form a spire that will open the door. Sound familiar? The expectation here is that the six guardians will split into three teams of two and control their respective zones from the constantly spawning enemies. The challenge is twofold. Number one, the teams must keep the enemies out of their circle because if an enemy steps into the circle, the spire formation resets. Number two, Sub-teams must communicate to concentrate damage on enemies and halt their approach, as enemies will spawn on multiple sides of the annex. 
Worth mentioning, the level design at the entrance of the Vault of Glass deliberately blocks the view of other sub-teams from your plate, making it difficult for sub-teams to assist one another. Occasionally, certain bigger enemies will spawn that can only be damaged quickly with certain status types. Sound familiar? This whole beginning of the raid is nothing. And as long as the sub-teams aren't garbage, control the zones, and the door opens. Any good boss encounter has multiple phases, and when the Vault of Glass opens, you fight the Templar. Phase 1 of this fight is defending the Conflux. The Conflux is a holographic spire that enemies are trying to sacrifice themselves on. But, as far as you're concerned, it's just another damn circle. So, one circle and six players to defend it? It sounds so easy. However, if an enemy touches this thing four times, the whole raid party will die. Or wipe, a term that most people who raid get real used to real fast. The expectation is that again, your party should split into three teams of two to control the flow of enemies from their spawns and halt their approach. The challenge here is threefold. Number one, the Templar, the real boss, is watching you. You cannot damage him yet, he's behind the shield, but it doesn't mean that he can't damage you or insta-kill your sorry ass by bombarding you with tons of unreasonable damage. You should stay out of his line of sight. Number two, eventually, enemies will start spawning that drop a green mist on the ground when killed. Sound familiar? If you step into this AOE or area of effect, the mist will mark you for negation. Periodically, the boss will cast Ritual of Negation, and if you have this mark, say hello to dead. You can get rid of the mark by cleansing yourself, but the cleanse point is right in front of the boss, and it's also in between two enemy spawns. Good luck. Number three, communication. As usual, the raid and its mechanics are not inherently difficult unless everyone is severely underleveled. The real challenge is pulling your own weight and compensating for each other's occasional mistakes. Sometimes a raid will punish even one mistake to the point where the whole team needs to wipe and the encounter needs to be reset. Have you ever played Cuphead? You ever lose too much health right at the beginning of the encounter and figure, boy, I need to just retry right now. That's what it's like. Worth mentioning, special enemy types make this encounter spicy, especially if people lose the plot. The crowd needs to be controlled, because if not, the mist will be everywhere. And if the mist ends up everywhere, multiple people will end up marked. If multiple people end up marked, they'll be running to be cleansed, which will leave less people defending. And if four enemies reach that conflux, wipe. Sprinkle in some teleporting enemies just to spice things up. Sound familiar? Dodge the boss, avoid the acid, control the zones, don't get overwhelmed, and you'll make it to Phase 4. Phase 4 are the oracles, glowing cubes that will spawn in different locations that need to quickly be destroyed or everyone will be marked for negation. They spawn one at a time and there are seven in total. There will be seven total waves of the oracle spawning in the middle of you fighting enemies. The arena is designed deliberately to make it difficult to see more than two oracles at once, so the raid party is expected to position themselves accordingly or spread so that they can all get a glimpse of where they might spawn. The challenge here is twofold. Number one, concentration. This encounter demands your team coordinate by calling out the oracle positions and concentrating damage on them so that they can easily be destroyed and everyone won't get marked. Number two, communication and neutralization. Snipers will begin spawning on platforms that are surrounding the arena. Pretty strong snipers too. Sound familiar? Wait, wait a minute, that's the wrong... These snipers, hobgoblins, have a moment of invulnerability when initially attacked, just to waste a bit of your time. So juggle that with the swarming enemies and oracles that you have to shoot quickly. Do what you're supposed to and you'll make it to phase five, the final phase of the Templar fight. That boss that's been shielded up until now is still shielded. However, 
A shield has spawned. This is known as the relic. The relic is key to bringing down the boss's shield so that your team can damage the boss. One of the six raid party members must now become the relic holder and consistently damage enough enemies to charge up the relic so that they can fully charge a blast that will momentarily bring the shield of the boss down. The challenge here is threefold. Number one, detention. When the relic holder blasts the boss to bring his shield down, a detainment field will envelop up to three members of the raid party and freeze them in place. These party members will not be able to shoot through their bubble until it is destroyed, and only when it is destroyed can they deal damage to the boss. Number two, remember the oracles from an earlier phase of this fight? They're here as well, and if you don't destroy them fast enough, even in the midst of all of this, you're all getting marked for negation. You're all getting marked. Number three, if your group didn't destroy the oracles fast enough, the relic holder is now responsible for cleansing people. The shield or relic has an ability to erect a bubble that only if you're standing inside can cleanse you. So you need to find the relic holder and receive that cleanse. Otherwise, you're dead. Worth mentioning. If the relic holder dies, he will drop the relic. And if it's not picked up in a few seconds, the whole team dies. The boss will enrage if you spend more than eight minutes fighting him. And believe it or not, this whole fight is just a test of coordination for your specific raid party. The relic holder communicating that they're about to drop the shield so everybody can reload and get into position, that's coordination. Teammates helping each other quickly drop these detention bubbles so everyone can concentrate damage on the boss, that's coordination. The big truth about a raid is it's only as difficult as the people you drag in there. Most raid encounters are a multiple person juggling act, and you can drop a ball or two, but drop too many? Mm -mm. You know, I could explain the labyrinth or the final boss of this raid, but I think I, I've made my point. Coordination, communication, teamwork, flawless execution, Destiny had multiplayer PvP modes and patrol modes that encouraged solo players to, however briefly, team up for public events, control modes that would test their capacity to execute. Marvel's Avengers can barely handle two people in one game without performance falling to shit. Its idea of endgame modes, and in fact one of the only modes that guarantees high level exotic gear, is a solo activity that takes you through over 40 floors of the same crap. Are you getting the picture? Crystal Dynamics will definitely dump out whatever modes were designed back when they actually had a full development team, but do you have any reason to believe that something resembling a raid will make it to this game? The answer should be no. Whatever some of us wanted this game to be, it had years to craft and chose not to. Their direction has been laid in, and following their inability to recoup the development cost is unlikely to change because even if they had all the money in the world and could go in any direction, they'd probably still double down on shit like double archers and boring skins in a shallow, hastily crafted marketplace that was clearly an afterthought. To complement its no social features, how can you even pretend? I've suggested enhanced harm rooms with modifiers where you can select the environment, horde modes, maybe some sort of escort the payload type of shit. Assets already exist in the game that could so easily be rearranged to have made these modes happen. You know that Iron Man flight mission? In the single player, that shit should have set the stage for what could have been, what should have been, challenge modes built around the flying heroes. And I know right now it's just Thor and Stark, but if Plague and Fire wasn't here, do you think that Carol Danvers and maybe Rhodey would be in the game by now? My point is this, until you see something to the contrary, don't call it a comeback. And don't call beating up Claw in Wakanda a raid. For more information on what raids are and how they work, I've linked a very concise video by Datto in the description. Its URL links directly to the timestamp that he talks about two old raids from Warcraft that I used to really enjoy. Those are what raids are. I'm not gatekeeping, I'm just saying. 
killing enemies before a timer runs out, standing on a fucking square with a number on it, bro. Shooting a target on a wall. That's not a raid. You, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god. In a week, the shills will have a shiny new promise to talk about and everything will be back to being super okay for them. But I know better than to expect even half of the things that I've outlined here to be fixed. And this is what the game should have been at launch. Thank you for watching this far. If you're not subscribed, um, must be nice. Um, in the comment section, tell me your realistic expectations for this game. And uh, if you give me 300 likes, I'm, I'm going to dump every picture I've ever taken in this game. I'm going to call it a Marvel Avengers slideshow. Love you. Bye.